Hello and welcome to Astronomy. My name is Kyle Jeter. I'm a teacher at Marjorie Stillman Douglas High School, where I've been teaching since 1994. I started astronomy class in the fall of 1997, and it was the best career move I ever made. This is the first lecture I give every year. So chapter one, charting the heavens. Let's get right into it. Our place in space. The very first section of this chapter, I'd like to give a broad overview of the really major themes in astronomy before we kind of sink into the details and spend weeks and months learning specifics. Let's just talk about the really broad, big themes uh, that we'll hopefully learn throughout the year. Starting with this one, Earth is not central. Of all the things we've uncovered in the 400 years of what we might call modern astronomy since the telescope was invented, this might be the biggest discovery we've made. Um, as you recall, one of the big debates 400 years ago was whether we have a, a, a geocentric solar system with the Earth at the center, which is what they thought in ancient times, almost everybody, or a heliocentric uh, universe where the sun is at the center. Now, their idea of a universe was much different than ours, but still, the point is, uh, as we know now, that the planets don't uh, orbit around the Earth, they orbit around the Sun. And I like to say that was kind of the first blow to our ego. Uh, later on, we find out, uh, you know, throughout the 1800s, for example, that our Sun is just a very typical star and nothing special about it, average in size and mass and uh, luminosity and things like that. Then we find out in the early 1900s that our, our Sun is not at the center of our galaxy either, not even close. And finally, we find out that our galaxy, our, our beautiful Milky Way galaxy, is not the only galaxy, which is what they thought up until about the 1920s or so. And uh, at that point, they discover there are a few other galaxies out there, like, you know, a hundred billion or so. So anyway, uh, once again, it seems like our, our ego gets hurt because we keep finding out. And I think that, you know, one of the next uh, shoes to drop here will be when we find out we're not the only Earth even. We'll find other Earths here, I think, very, very soon. We're already finding planets that are roughly the size and mass and density of Earth. Uh, we're close on that. But actually truly finding something that's Earth-like is probably the next maybe blow to our ego. So that's one giant theme in astronomy. Let's talk about another one. I give a whole lecture on this or that's partly about this that I, I'll post on my YouTube site as well. Um, but when we think about what our bodies are made of, if you look at the percentages, you know, things like carbon, we're carbon-based life. It's what we have in common with a, an oak tree and a jellyfish and an amoeba. Okay, we're all carbon-based there are only a few elements that really make up your body. We look at a periodic table with well over a hundred elements and, and there aren't really all that many, uh, that make you up, uh, things like carbon and oxygen and hydrogen. Well, where do those elements, uh, come from? Well, almost all of those elements came from stars. They were created in the nuclear furnaces at the center, at the core of stars. It's an amazing thing. We're going to go into great deal about this uh, later in the year. As a matter of fact, there's only one naturally occurring element that wasn't uh, created inside of a star. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is the building block. So where did hydrogen come from? Well, it was created basically, and all hydrogen really is, right, is a proton and electron. Uh, and in very high temperatures, when the electron gets uh, stripped off, it's just a proton. Well, protons were created then in, in the Big Bang or, you know, directly after that time period early on in the history of the universe, which is a pretty wild thing to think about. So you look at your hand, you look at the actual, you know, elements, the atoms that make up your hand. There's one of two possibilities, the carbon and the oxygen, all that stuff that makes you up was actually created inside of a star. That's a wild thing to think about. And you think, well, how is that possible? Well, I'm talking about stars that created those elements many billions of years ago, before our sun had even ignited, before our earth had formed. And But some of those stars, for example, exploded in, in a supernova explosion, and the elements they'd been creating in their core got blown out into space so that later on, when our solar system formed, it formed from those very elements. It's pretty wild. Your body is 
billions of years old, if you want to think of it that way. And the hydrogen in your body, and yes, you have plenty of hydrogen in your body because, as you know, most of your body is something called H2O. And that hydrogen was created at the time of the Big Bang. So it's even older. Uh, we're talking about 13 over, well, well over 13 billion years, almost 14 billion years old. So that is an amazing theme throughout astronomy. So you, you know, you may not think you have an interest in astronomy, but this is one of the main reasons that you should as, as, um, we'll hear from, uh, uh, a little quote here, see a little quote here from, uh, our main man, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Not only are we in the universe, the universe is in us. Kind of a neat way to put it. Okay. One last really, really giant theme uh, before we begin the year. The universe is vast. Well, there's the understatement of the year. Look, if I ask a student, how far do you live from school? They're not going to answer me in centimeters. We would all laugh. It would be a ridiculously big number. And why would you use centimeters? Why wouldn't you use kilometers or miles? Well, you would because it's a much larger unit of measurement that matches that long distance. Well, the same thing happens in space pretty quickly. Okay, once we get out into the solar system, using miles and kilometers starts to become pretty annoying because you're dealing with really large numbers and it's a little harder to envision and compare distances. So astronomers and scientists have come up with some other units. Perhaps you know this one. Uh, from middle school, an AU or an astronomical unit, the distance, of course, from the Earth to the Sun, it's the equivalent of 93 million miles. So that's a good one to know. Uh, everybody should know that one, an AU. So Sun to Earth, that's our meter stick. And we use that essentially within our solar system. Okay, so it's a lot, of, instead of dealing with many billions of miles and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to say, you know, that uh, Neptune is 30 AUs from the sun. It's much easier to say that. And it gives you a comparison. Okay, it's 30 times farther than the Earth is from the sun. It's a lot easier to visualize. That's an AU. But astronomers, once you get outside of our solar system and you start going into the realm of other stars, they needed something even larger, an even larger unit. And, of course, that brings us to the famous light year. Don't think of time when you think of light year. A light year is the distance. That's the key word. It's a distance. It's another meter stick, except a longer meter stick. It's the distance light can travel in a year. In other words, if you take a laser beam and shine it into space and you let it go and let it keep going and keep going, how far will it get in one year? Now, that's mind boggling. It's absolutely mind boggling because that laser beam in one second, in just one second of time, can orbit the Earth seven and a half times in a second. In a second. Let that sink in. It's just it's unbelievable. Now imagine how far it could go. And by the way, that's about the distance from us to the moon. So you can actually say that the moon is about just over one light second away. That would be a unit of distance, a light second. But when you get out to other planets like Mars, for example, you'd have to start measuring it in light minutes. We don't use those terms. We use AUs instead. But I'm just saying you could use light minutes. Get out to Pluto and you're talking about light hours. But when you talk about going to other stars, that's when we use light years. That's the term we use, of course, light years. And a single light year is six trillion miles in distance. Good luck fathoming that. It's just, it's unbelievable. And there are no stars, by the way, other than the sun, of course, within a light year. There are not any stars within two or three or four light years. So within 24 trillion miles of our solar system, there are no other stars. Unbelievable. The closest one's 4.3 light years away. So let's recap here and look at some some distances very quickly here. So from the Earth to the moon, do you remember how far? How long would it take light if you take a laser beam and shine it? Just over a second. How about from the sun to the Earth? Oh, I didn't mention this one. What do you think? Seconds, minutes, hours, weeks. That one's going to be hours. Uh, excuse me, minutes. That's about, uh, I think it's uh, 8.3 minutes, something like that. Yeah. 
And and we'll talk about the time consequence of that and so forth later. The fact you're really kind of looking into the past. And uh, from the sun to Pluto, I mentioned this one. That's uh, a few hours. The uh, New Horizons spaceship that flew by Pluto a few years ago. It was the fastest uh, human-made object ever. By the time it picked up a, some speed from Jupiter and a gravitational assist, it was the fastest moving object ever that we've ever created. And it took it, I believe it was nine years, <laughs> nine years to get from Earth to Pluto and to take a beam of light, five hours, five hours. That's how fast light is. And then finally, you get to, again, the stars. The closest star system is the Alpha Centauri system. It's actually a triple star system. The closest one of the three is called uh, Proxima Centauri. Technically, it's our closest neighbor. But regardless, uh, that star system, that triple star system, is, as I mentioned earlier, just over four light years away. Now, that's our next door neighbor. What if we want to go to what I like to call downtown? What if we want to go to the center of our own galaxy? The center of the Milky Way. You ready for this? Now, when we see the Milky Way at night, this is what it looks like. This beautiful path, this white path across the sky that was literally named after, after milk for being a white path. And if you go in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius and keep on going, how long would it take you to get to the center of our galaxy? That takes a while. 26,000 years. Guys, that's not, we're not talking about a spaceship taking 26,000 years. We're talking about light. Yeah, that can travel around the earth seven and a half times in one second. It would still take a light beam 26,000 years to get to the center of our own galaxy. That's our galaxy. That's like our hometown. And then you have to start talking about what about other galaxies? There's one that's relatively close, if you will, called the Andromeda galaxy and it takes light over two million years to get there that's our neighbor galaxy 2.3 million light years away then we talk about the wider universe it's just craziness when you start throwing out terms millions of light years and yes billions of light years away light taking that long to stretch across. Um, it's a little hard to estimate the exact size of the universe. We know the age of the universe is 13.8 billion years. So it's, it's roughly, let's say, 100 billion uh, light years across, if you will. This gets a little tricky. But anyway, you can't fathom that. Nobody can fathom the immensity of our universe. It's just so hard uh, to imagine. But anyway, that's another, obviously, giant theme in astronomy, trying to understand the scale of things. And believe me, astronomers study everything from the very smallest scale uh, to the very largest scale. And that's one of the things that makes it such a beautiful, beautiful subject. I'm glad that you're learning about it. I hope you'll watch all my other lectures. Thank you for listening.